Hi all. Today let's see what is an RxJS subject and what are the different types of subjects available and the use case for each of them. A subject is a special kind of observable which is multicast and keeps track of the list of subscribers within itself. By being multicast it means the subject sends the same value to all the subscribers simultaneously. So this is different from an observable. An observable is unicast in that each of the new subscriber will receive a separate instance of the observable and will hence receive a different value. Another important thing about subject is that a subject can act as both an observable as well as an observer. Here in our application, I have created a shared service within which I have created a property sub and to which I am assigning a new subject. So you can define the type of data which this subject emits. So in this case I have given it as a string. Now let's see what I meant by the subject can act as both an observable as well as an observer. So here within this subscriber component if you see, I am able to directly subscribe to this particular subject and pass an observer. So in this scenario, the subject acts as a observable. Similarly, if you go to the app component, you can see that you will be able to call the methods that is next, error and complete, which are usually associated with an observer. These methods also are available within subjects. So in effect, it acts as an observer as well. So now let's go through in detail through the Angular application which I have created. This Angular application it basically consists of an app component within which we will be able to provide some data. And through this button, the send to subscribers, we will be sending this data to multiple other components. So here if you check, you can see that there are two children components. That is the app subscriber 1 and app subscriber 2. So within this subscriber 1 and 2, what we are doing is we are subscribing to the subject which we have created within the shared service. So whenever a new data comes from this subject, we are pushing this to an list that is the received data and that list we are showing it in the template. So the subscriber 1 and 2 are almost similar. Now going back to the app component, there are three buttons for this app component. One is the send to subscribers. So if you go to the implementation, you can see that we are effectively emitting a new data from this subject by making use of the next method. So the data whichever we enter within this input box, it will be emitted and both the subscriber 1 and 2 will be able to receive it simultaneously. Similarly, we have the send error where we will be emitting an error and the third button will effectively complete the subject. Now let's see the application in action. So here I am entering a data and I am clicking send to subscribers. You can see that immediately the same value is received by both the subscriber 1 as well as 2. Similarly I am going to enter a new data. It will also be received by the both the subscribers. Now let's see what happens in case a particular subscriber unsubscribes from this stream. So if you go to the subscriber component here in the HTML, when I click on unsubscribe, what I am doing is I am effectively unsubscribing from the subscription which is created when I subscribe to this subject. So here I call the unsubscribe method and I am unsubscribing it. So let's unsubscribe 
from the subscriber one so when i unsubscribe i am clearing out the data so now what happens is in case i enter a new data and send to subscriber only the currently active subscriber will be able to receive it now in case the subscriber one subscribes back you can see that there is no value which was previously emitted by the subject so one thing to note about the subject is that it does not keep track of the state or the previous values if a new value is emitted at that time immediately the currently active subscribers will be able to receive it so what is the use case of a subject a subject is mainly used for emitting events or data which can be received by actively present subscribers so it does not maintain the state so in case you need to create a state you will not be able to make use of the subjects for events the most preferred option is the subject similarly we will be able to send error as well as complete the subject so let's see what happens when we complete you can see that no data is emitted but in case we try to send some data again you will not be able to do so because our stream is already terminated one more option is there that is the send error where we will be able to call the error method and pass an error so let's see that as well so here what happened is that since we did not handle the error within our components that is the subscriber 1 and 2 it the error was directly thrown so now let's see how we will be able to handle these errors within our components so here you can see that we are directly passing the subscriber here there is another option there we will be able to pass an object so here we can pass a key called next to which we will be able to pass the observer and similarly we can create another key called error to which we will be able to receive the error so here i have a separate array called the received error which i can make use of for receiving the error similarly in subscriber 2 as well we will be able to do the same so let's go there as well so we have added the error for both the components now let's send some data you can see that the data is received fine and similarly when we send an error both the components are able to receive the error simultaneously so one thing to notice that once an error happens after that no data will be sent across the streams and similarly when we unsubscribe from the stream when we subscribe back you can see that the error status is available for both the subscribers now let's take a look at another kind of subject that is available within rsjs that is the behavior subject so one thing special about behavior subject is that we need to give an initial value when we create a behavior subject so here i am giving a string as default so whenever this subject is created the initial value will also be available so now let's try to send some data so here you can see that before even sending any data the subscribers whenever they subscribe to this behavior subject they immediately receive this initial value and the subscribe the observer which is defined within our subscribe block that is this next it will be immediately executed so the thing about behavior subject is that it will be able to maintain state that is the previously emitted value will be available within the behavior subject so here let's send a new data so here again it will act similar to the subject itself but one thing to notice that in case i unsubscribe from the behavior subject and subscribe back you can see that 
the last value which was emitted that is 2 it is still available within the behavior subject so when we subscribe back immediately it will be executing the callback that is the observer with that particular value so the main use case of behavior subject is that this can be used for creating state management tools so if you see most of the state management tools like ngrx ngxs all these internally make use of the behavior subject and another thing to note is that the behavior subject should not be used for sending events suppose there is a scenario that i need to send an event to both the components so that i can print a document so suppose that only the subscriber 2 is currently subscribed and i send a message then this particular subscriber alone will print the document but the problem with behavior subject is that when this particular subscriber 1 subscribes back immediately the callback will be executed so that is not the intended behavior so in case you are planning to send events that is without any payload to subscribers you must make use of the normal subjects not the behavior subjects the behavior subject will execute the observer immediately on subscription so that is not needed for events other than that in case of errors you can see that the error is handled in a similar way to the subjects and once an error occurs you will not be able to send across any data and here again when we unsubscribe and subscribe back here one thing to note is that when a behavior subject errors out the previous value is lost that is the previous the last emitted value that was 2 it will not be available any longer similarly in case i complete the behavior subject again you will not be able to send any data but in this case when i unsubscribe and subscribe back i will not be able to get any data now let us take a look at another subject that is the replay subject which is quite similar to the behavior subject but with some slight differences let's create a new replay subject so the type you can define so the difference between the behavior subject and the replay subject is that here we will be able to pass the first parameter which will be the count or previously you saw that behavior subject only stores the last emitted value but here you will be able to tell the number of previous values which needs to be stored so in this case i am saying that i need to replay the last three emitted values so now let's see this in action so one difference is that here we need not define a initial value and when i send data so here i am sending three data and i am sending a fourth one as well now let's see what happens when i unsubscribe and subscribe to this particular replay subject so here first i am unsubscribing from this replay subject and i am subscribing back so now you can see that the last three values which are emitted that is 2 3 and 4 these are stored within the replay subject and when i subscribe back these three values will be emitted and the callback that is the observer which we define here in the next these will be executed with the, the last three values another thing to note is that in case a replay subject errors out so previously you saw that when a behavior subject errors out the last value gets lost now let's see what happens when we unsubscribe and subscribe back to the replay subject you can see that e even though the stream errored out the last three values that is the stored values available within the replay subject they are kept as such so they will be available to the subscriber even after the stream is errored out so this is something special about the replay subject similarly 
when we press complete after that we will not be able to send any data to the subscribers and in this scenario when we unsubscribe and subscribe back the previously emitted values are still available so these are the special uses of replace subject and here in the replace subject we have an additional parameter that is the second parameter which we can give here so here basically we will be able to provide the the amount of time for which these three or these previous values needs to be stored so let's see this in action so initially i am emitting one two and three so here i have a time so within that i unsubscribe you can see that only the last one particular value that got emitted this is because the values 1 and 2 they were emitted before this default time that is 5 so now in case i unsubscribe and subscribe again you can see that none of the values are available because when this particular time is expired that is once the once a value is emitted and this particular time has been expired then those values are removed from the replace subject so let's give a bit more higher value so here i am giving a 10 second value so i am emitting six values and unsubscribing again so here you can see that as the time passes everything got removed from the replace subject so this is another useful functionality that is available within the replace subject now let's take a look at the final type of subject that is the async subject so here we can comment out the replace subject and define an async subject so async subject does not have any parameters so you can just provide the type of the data which will be emitted let's go to the application and see how it works so here again i am sending some data but you can see that even though I am keeping on sending data to the subscribers, nothing is getting executed and as, as a result, the subscriber is not able to get any data. So what is the use of this async subject? When we complete this particular async subject, at that time, the last value which was emitted. So here I had given four values, four was the last value. So that particular value alone will be emitted to all the subscribers so this is the use case of async subject now after that whatever you do there won't be any response and the completion is the only action in which you will be able to receive the data from the subscription now similarly in case you send an error at that time you will be able to receive the error and after that you will not be able to do either the next or the complete similarly when we unsubscribe and subscribe the error will be available similarly the completed value that is the last value when we unsubscribe and subscribe that also will be available for all the subscribers Hope you are able to get a good understanding about the different types of subjects and the use cases for each of them. See you soon. Thank you.